rise in their places, and I call the Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Speaker. This is the worst government in Australian Federation history. They are addicted to a simple policy. They believe that the mindless, simple repetition of certain words <coughs> will hypnotise the Australian people into believe it is actually happening. And nowhere is the lie greater from this government than when it comes to them pretending to be about jobs and growth. Labor will never take a lecture from this mob about the creation of jobs. We won't take a lecture from them, nor will Australians, about their faux commitment to employment, when since they've got elected in the last 700 days, unemployment is now at 800,000. Did you see how much this so-called leader of Australia couldn't answer a straight question about how many people are unemployed? Did you see how his mouth went dry and his throat constricted, his eyes darted around the chamber when asked when was the last time there were 800,000 people unemployed in this country? He knows it hasn't been since 1994. This is indeed the worst anti-jobs Prime Minister we've seen in a very long time. Mr Hockey is fond of saying what unemployment was in the Howard years. Well, I'll remind Mr Hockey about jobs when he took over. Unemployment had a five in front of it. It's now got a six in front of it. There have been 188,000 people now who are long-term unemployed. There are 800,000 people who are unemployed full stop. There are over a million Australians who regularly record that they would like more hours of work. And there's 800,000 people on the disability support bench who this government constantly maligns and puts in the too hard basket. We see youth unemployment much higher than it should be. We see record highs of unemployment in Western Australia. Since Mr Abbott and his Liberals got elected in Australia, unemployment in Western Australia has gone up by nearly 30,000 people. Jobs is a problem in this country, and the government has no answer on it. Yet on Saturday in Adelaide, this Prime Minister got up and said to the party faithful in Adelaide, which is a dwindling number I recognise, two great years in government. That's his summary. Two great years in government. I had to, it, it fills me with horror to imagine what in this Prime Minister's imagination two bad years of an Abbott government looks like. But the real problem is, if we want to talk about jobs, the masterminds of this so-called jobs and growth mirage that this government keeps talking about have been in chaos all this week. And it is only Wednesday. Look at the dysfunction of this government. This Prime Minister this week has got out his well-dusted riot act and read it again to his colleagues. He worked strenuously, tirelessly through an empty cabinet agenda. In fact, that wasn't quite empty, was it? There was an important note for the team in the empty box, the folder box at the bottom. Presumably it was from the Ministry of Truth or whatever they're calling the Prime Minister's personal office these days. It says, if asked about cabinet leaks, Response: The cabinet is functioning exceptionally well. <laughs> exceptionally well. How do we know it's functioning exceptionally well? Because they leaked it to us. Who needs Sky when we got breakfast. the cabinet ministers to find out what's going on? But this is a government who is fond of creating division in this country. Everything that goes wrong for this government, everything they mishandle, they blame on a new set, a new confected set of enemies. And obviously, the last two days, the unhinged attack on the environment has been remarkable. In fact, let me just say this about the Prime Minister's latest anti-environment rant, what he said about the EPBC. Since that notorious Green—he didn't say this bit—he said they've got to change the law. The law is bad. The law is a terrible law. I, Tony Abbott, will step up with my shining cross and I will change it and save the people and take them to the promised land on the environment. The problem is the law he wants to change was introduced in July 2000. Uh oh you think? July 2000. Was that when the Socialists were running the government or was that when the Communists were running? It was actually John Howard. John Howard. Indeed, since John Howard introduced the very protection for the environment and good process that the Prime Minister is so desperately trying to get rid of, there have been 5,500 projects through that process. 5,500, but clearly the Prime Minister, to justify not just fixing up the mistake in the ranks of his own ministry. 5,500, you would conclude that to justify this on, this wholesale onslaught on the so-called lawfare crisis in the environment, this great new big crisis which demands probably they'll be wearing uniforms next to deal with the crisis. What we'll see is that they, there have actually been 
after five and a half thousand successful projects. Oh, listen, you've been at Reclaim Australia. Enough from you. No, we've seen the um, member for Dawson. We've seen member for Dawson. Thirty-three, we'll see rejecting. Thirty-three federal court challenges. Is that the number you just heard me say? Out of five and a half thousand projects, this great epidemic, this conspiracy of the Green Left. John Howard Alliance to ruin Australia, uh, five and a half thousand uh, projects, 33 have gone to the federal court, 33, and that's been against a total of 22 projects. That's 33 applications against 22 projects out of five and a half thousand. There's a clear crisis here, but I, that's 0.4 per cent for those of you who can't count opposite. Now I'll actually take you through the 33 because, after all, the government said stop everything. We're the champions of jobs. We're going to clean up this terrible scandal. I don't know why they don't have a royal commission to do it. Actually, <laughs> they say four were discontinued or resolved with the consent of the parties. So four, okay. Well, there's still 29. Six were legally successful in the sense that the application received a judgment. All the others were unsuccessful. So in fact, there's been six successful claims on five and a half thousand projects. On a change introduced by John Howard in 2000, this is a crisis. You could just see how this has made the otherwise very busy people drop their leaking and drop their pencils and everything else. And in fact, in 15 years, this massive job jobs crisis, which only can save only Tony Abbott can save Australia from, there's been one project cancelled. Leader of the opposition. What did you refer, say? One refer, project. Refer to members by their proper Oh well, titles. you know the current prime minister. Um, as grand conspiracies go. This has been about as systematic and effective as the CIA's exploding, exploding cigar in Castro's face. <laughs> this isn't about jobs. We know that the Prime Minister, we know the Prime Minister has simply and utterly, he hasn't got a plan for jobs. So what you do when you haven't got a plan for jobs is you start creating false bogeymen. Yep. Oh, we better be careful, we better be scared, don't get out of morning, bed in the morning because the Greens are under the bed with this terrible section of the act drafted by John Howard. They don't have a plan for jobs. They could have fixed. They could have fixed this whole issue without spending months going through legislation, simply asking the department to resubmit the document to the minister. And the minister could have just checked because he made an identical mistake some months ago. But when we talk about the, the jobs plan of the government, one, we know that the numbers are horrific under this Member government. For Dawson. Two, we are under the still here, Dawson. Uh, two, we are seeing this false conspiracy the on the Member Greens. for Dawson is warned. We'll be, we the, member the, for Dawson, the member for Dawson will cease in dejecting. And then they talk about the failure of jobs and growth. The problem with them and jobs and growth is that they've had two years to actually do something about employment. When I listen to this government talk about jobs and growth, I actually close my eyes and I think, well, who's been helped by this government? Is it the auto workers at Holden and Toyota? No. Is it the refinery workers at Gove? No. Is it the shipyard workers in Williamstown and Newcastle? No. Is it the Alcoa workers in Geelong? No. Is it whole communities like Queenstown on the west coast of Tassie? No. Is it the 100 dock workers who were sacked by text the other day at the Port Botany Terminal? And how about this government caring about jobs? What does that Minister for Work Choices like say, uh, um, Eric, Senator Abetz, he of the Dolce and Gabbana fame? What does he say? Fair enough. Why not sack people by text? He wish he had thought of it first. And of course, if we want to talk about the lack of commitment to jobs by this government, let's have a look at renewable energy. Last year, the rest of the world added 1.2 million jobs in renewable energy. So you think, fair enough, we must have got a portion of that. No. We've gone back 13 per cent in the last year in renewable jobs. Only under this incompetent leader and his incompetent, divided administration can Australia go backwards on renewable energy jobs and the rest of the world is going forward. We know there's only one job that matters in Australia to this Prime Minister, his own job. And let me talk about this question of jobs when they talk about chapter and attack. Labor and make their scurrilous lies about Labor's opposition. We do believe in trade liberalisation. We do believe in the benefits that it brings new markets. We do get that. But a free trade agreement does not mean signing a blank cheque. A rushing into a free trade agreement, this government is planning to dud Australian workers. It's clear that when it came to land purchases, which might be facilitated by Chafter, this government held the line. They created new owner. They've created new standards. But when it came to Labor people, they sold them out in a heartbeat. Don't worry about the fine print there. We'll just trust everything. Let's get rid of the safety net. Let's get rid of labour market testing in these IFAs. 
So this is a government we know only cares about some jobs and not other jobs. Labor likes all the upside of this agreement. We just won't sign on to all the downside of this agreement. This is a government who has no plan for workers, has got no plan for quality jobs. They've got no plan for skills, no plan for schools, no plan for TAFE, no plan for universities, no plan for research, no plan for manufacturing, no plan for renewable energy, no plan for good jobs, no plan to attract good jobs in the future. They have no plan except to save their own worthless jobs.